already a very busy day in the seismic world. We are taking a trip to the Aleutian Islands off the coast of Alaska. At least three significant earthquakes, all ranging from a 7.0 down to a 6.0. As you can see, putting three different tsunami buoys into activation mode. We will talk about that as well as another area we really need to take a look at that not many people focus on. I am in fact talking about the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, a massive threat to the eastern coast of the United States and Canada. And I gotta say, this area has been getting lit up lately. I've got all the info we're gonna need on these current earthquakes and the ones we're gonna be looking out for. We're breaking it all down right here, right now. Let's go. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. It is January 11th, 2022, 11.35 a.m. And just a few hours ago, we had a three-peat of earthquakes all taking place off the Aleutian Islands in Alaska. As we said before, ranging from 7.0s on some charts down to a 6.0. Three big hits back to back to back. I've got you here on the USGS. And we also have Volcano Discovery for comparison. First things first, I want to show you the three tsunami buoys that were set off due to these earthquakes. I want to be clear as of right now there is no tsunami threat but we're going to look at each one of these buoys anyway the first of which you could see right here had a very distinct line you could see where the buoy moved up and down according to where it should be on normal tides when we open the data we can get a better look at how much this buoy actually moved so technically within one meter so it raised and dropped all within a three foot span nothing too crazy but nonetheless this buoy absolutely felt the shaking of the quake the next buoy here in the middle also shows a minor shake right here you could see at the end of the tide timetable here when we click on this event it was a little bit less than what the one towards the west felt not as much of a shake there and our third buoy here is quite interesting as it had the biggest reaction by far out of all three of these clicking on the event details we can see that this buoy registered many many shakes now i don't know if that's because it was further away and there actually was a wave that rippled and caused this buoy to change its depths and readings anything in the red you can see is outside of normal movement keep in mind a lot of different factors at play when it determines what sets off a tsunami buoy but let's take a look at this quake in particular the 6.8 Obviously downgraded now, a 7.0 on many charts, at 22.3 kilometers in depth. In fact, when it comes to the depths of these three earthquakes, specifically in the Alaskan area, the weakest of the three registered at 41.9 kilometers. The 6.6 that took place one hour after the 7.0 was at 11.2 kilometers, and then once again, the strongest was 22.3 kilometers. Now, I bring up the significance of this because if we switch over to 30 days of magnitude 4.5 and higher. You will notice that today the Alaskan earthquake is the third largest quake to take place in the last 30 day span. Only being beat by two Indonesia earthquakes, one a 7.3, followed by another 7.3 about two weeks later. There are a few other earthquakes that need notable mention here, and that is obviously Petrolia California earthquake. The 6.2 that took place off the coast of Western California, sticking with our 6.0 range. All we have to do is go down to Cruz de Laredo, Mexico, a 6.0 took place on December 22nd. We covered the 6.1 that took place just a week ago, the 6.1 in Nicaragua. And now we got to talk about our two 6.0 plus earthquakes that have both recently taken place on the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, specifically a 6.0 on January 10th, just yesterday. And one week ago, a 6.1 Mid-Atlantic Ridge quake on January 3rd. So at this point, it would be silly of me to not take a look at this area, the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. Jumping over to Volcano Discovery, and we have highlighted only the 6.0 and higher earthquakes over the last 30 days. And we begin to see a little bit of a trend. It looks like our Indiana 6.1 fake earthquake is still within the data here on Volcano Discovery, which is very interesting because if we look at these quakes seven days ago, a 6.1 in the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, the Phantom 6.1 13 days ago in Indiana, and a 6.2 on December 20th west of Petrolia, California. When you look at all these quakes on the chart together, it almost looks as if that Indiana earthquake was supposed to happen. It seems to fit with this ongoing trend. When it comes to earthquakes, we know there are plenty of areas to expect a big one that could easily threaten the United States with not just the shaking part, but we're talking about waves. The United States happens to fall between two very active areas 
Obviously, the Western United States with the San Andreas fault line, the fear of the big one, the Juan de Fuca fracture zone. Of course, we have the threat of the Alaskan earthquakes and that very active fault line pushing water down towards the United States. And of course, you're not going to forget the drama that went on with La Palma and the possibility of that volcano itself causing a tsunami to then affect the east coast of the U.S. What people don't talk about too often is the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. This may be because we don't get too many significant earthquakes earthquakes within that area, but in the last week I just showed you, we've had two possible 6.0 plus earthquakes, and I gotta say it makes me wonder, what kind of power can come from that area, putting a direct threat on the eastern part of the United States? Now, if you do a quick search on the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, it does say that because of the way the two plate boundaries are spreading apart from each other rather than crashing into each other, the risks are a little bit lower for a tsunami. But that data was based off of lower grade earthquakes. It is not too often that you get back to back 6.0 earthquakes along the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. So even though past science and studies may say that the risk is low, the past few years have proven to show that things that are usually normal are no longer normal. I'm going to be doing a follow-up video on the Mid-Atlantic Ridge itself and the history of the biggest earthquakes that have taken place in that area. And we're going to compare some data and see if it's possible that things are changing. I have a few other videos I'm working on for today. But I will definitely leave the website for the Animation Earthquake site, the Princeton University Seismic Activity site. Very, very cool. I'm sure a lot of you are wondering how I got those waves to flow in the earthquake graphics. That link will be down below. I want to thank you all for taking the time to watch this video. Comments or concerns, please leave down below. Shout out to Canada, and I will see you all in the next video. Be safe. Take care. Bye-bye. Stop right there, my friends. If you have not already, click that subscribe button and don't forget to hit the click bell icon. You will get click all notifications from this channel. And trust me, you won't be disappointed.